welcome to Yoga with Katie. My name is Katie, uh, we have Fred and Wynne the dogs also, who are currently going through some uh, training needs, so um, there could be a scattering of um, kibble at any time if anything, you know, goes wrong. Be prepared. Um, so we've got a nice little heart opening flow for you today. Um, it's just, just a really nice little love letter to yourself, um, really open up through the heart area, um, a little bit faster paced than usual, um, I, I think you'll really enjoy it. Uh, so you'll need your comfortable clothing, your mat or uh, soft flooring and enjoy it. Um, and that's all you'll need. Go to your place. Stay in your place. When he goes in his place, when he goes in her place. <clears throat> there may be some of that. Okay. So we're going to start in a comfortable seat today. So you come to a comfortable cross-legged position, move the fleshy part of your buttocks out of the way, sit comfortably on your sit bones. Roll the shoulders up, back and down, rest your hands on the knees, take a deep inhale, pull your crown of the head to the ceiling, and on the out breath, allow your eyes to softly close. We'll begin by drawing our focus to the breath. Take a long, smooth inhale through the nose, and an equally long, smooth exhale back out. Notice the natural rise and fall of the body with the breath and begin to exaggerate that movement. On the inhale, let the belly feel like it's swelling up, like it's a balloon filling with air. And on the out breath, draw the belly button in towards the spine and feel that core engagement. And again, feel all four sides of the torso swelling outwards as the lungs fill with air. <clears throat> and on the exhale, draw the navel in towards the spine. Feel that core engagement, that feeling like you're about to brace to laugh. And I'd like you to stick with that breath as you start to scan through the body from the crown of the head all the way down to the tips of the toes. Take a moment to notice what's happened to your body while you've been thinking about your breath here. Have your shoulders started to round inwards? Have you collapsed down into your spine? Take a moment just to notice these things, see if you can sit a little taller, squeeze the shoulder blades down together, find that posture as you're scanning through the body. Just check in with how you're feeling today, notice any little niggles, aches or pains. Notice also the areas of ease, the areas of comfort. You've brought your body to the mat, so allow your mind to join it. Become really present here on your mat, in your practice. You take one last breath, and on the exhale, allow the eyes to gently open. Okay, you're going to start with some gentle circles. You're going to keep your hips where they are, and you're going to circle the rib cage around them. Just a small movement at first, just a little circle of the ribs over the hips. Really feel that connection to that centre of gravity just underneath the belly button here. You should feel like a bit of a pestle and mortar kind of effect. If you start to find a cat and cow sensation here, As you're moving forward, you're lifting through the heart, pulling it up towards the crease between the wall and ceiling. And as you move backwards, rounding out, drawing the spine towards the wall behind you. Starting to waken up through the core, through the spine. Okay, the next time that your heart comes to the front, I'd like you to reverse the circle and go back again in the opposite direction.
Okay, one last time. We're going to pause and extend the heart, comes to the front. And then come back to that neutral spine position, sitting up nice and tall. <clears throat> From here, you're going to drop the left hand to the mat. You're going to inhale to reach the right fingertips upwards. On the exhale, trace a wide circle out in front of that hand. And inhale to extend, and then exhale, sweep this nice wide circle out on the ground in front of you. If there are any small animals in your way, you may be thwarted in your attempt to maintain a full circle. You're trying to reach up really nice and tall and use that length to really widen through your circle as you're sweeping. Okay, last time. And from here we inhale to extend, and on the exhale, reach up and over. Just starting to get a bit of length into the side body. You're just trying to move side to side here, not forwards or backwards. Twice more, please. Okay, release that off. Take a little roll through that right shoulder to release any tension. And we'll repeat on the other side. Right hand comes down. Inhale to extend the left fingertips. And on the exhale, trace that wide sweeping circle. You might be starting to feel a mild stretch into the lower back here as you're reaching forwards. And already we're starting to waken up into the heart space. You're feeling that spaciousness around the lifted arm. Okay, last time, we come back to that side to side stretch, inhaling to extend upwards and exhaling up and over. And here you really start to notice that sense of space all through around the ribs. Just making space for our hearts today. Last time. Okay, release it off, take a little shoulder roll. Do the left shoulder. And then from here, we're gonna come around to all fours. So you can walk the hands forwards, walk over your ankles, and flip the ankles out so that they're in line with your knees. You'll have your knees into your hips your hands into your shoulders and your back in a long straight line to the crown of the head to the tailbone. We're going to find our cat and cow here. Inhaling to drop the belly and lifting the chest, taking the gaze straight ahead. Exhaling to round out, drawing the navel to the spine, the spine to the ceiling, dropping the crown of the head towards the floor. And you can just move in time through your own breath here. Each inhale, finding that lift through the heart space. Each exhale, finding that stretch through the back body. And again, stay really conscious of how this is affecting your heart space here. As you're rounding out, feel that stretch all across the upper back, that opening through the back of the heart space. As you're looking forwards, feel the heart shining forwards like a bright light. Oh, it's going to be a hokey one today, isn't it? Okay, go once more in each direction. Okay, 
Then coming back to that neutral spine, you're going to extend the right leg out behind and really push the heel down towards the back edge of your mat. Draw that knee in towards the chest and replace it back under the hip and at the side. Left leg extends out long, heel spikes towards the back edge of your mat and it draws in towards the chest before replacing under the hip. And you can move in time to your own breath here. You inhale to extend, exhale to spike the heel. Inhale to draw knee to chest, exhale to replace under the hip. Once more on each side. Okay, from here, we're going to make our way to standing. We're going to curl toes under, walk the hands in towards the knees. Lift the knees and walk the hands in towards the feet. You need to come to an easy forward fold position with the knees bent generously. And this time I want you to come really slowly up. Trail the fingertips along the feet and up the legs. Rounding out through the spine one vertebrae at a time. As you slowly, slowly rise all the way up. Roll the shoulders up back and down when you get there. Begin to make your way to the front of the mat, press some salutations. Begin to start the feet hip distance apart in Tadasana or mountain pose. Engage through the legs by drawing the heels together, the toes together, trying to lift the kneecaps up the thighs for that engagement through the legs. Draw the navel towards the spine, engaging through the core. Roll the shoulders up, back and down, then squeeze your shoulder blades down and together. Find that openness through the heart space. Palms face forward, the chin stays parallel to the floor. You need to inhale to pull the crown of the head to the ceiling. Stay really active through the whole body here. And reach the fingertips upwards. On the exhale, rain it down. Take a generous bend in the knees this first time. As you come to easy Uttanasana or forward fold, allow the crown of the head to hang down towards the mat. We inhale to slide the hands all the way up to the thighs this first time. As you come to the halfway lift, find that long straight line from the crown of the head to the tailbone. And exhale to release. Bend the knees generously enough to get your hands to the floor here. And you're going to step the right and the left foot back, and drop to the knees as you come to a three-quarter plank position. Put the hands into the shoulders with the fingers spread wide in a long straight line from the crown of the head to the knees. On the next out breath, keep the elbows tucked in tight to the sides. You slowly, slowly lower all the way down to the mat. Inhale to lift through the heart, lifting the shoulders, keeping a generous bend in the elbows this first time, baby cobra. The gaze stays out about a metre in front of you on the floor. And exhale to release. The next inhale pushes us back to our three-quarter plank position. And from here, you're going to step your left foot in to your left hand. If it doesn't step all the way in by itself, you can edge it in a little bit and move it in with your hand. We're going to come to a low lunge position. You're framing the foot with your hands and you're going to really sink your hips down towards your left heel. Feel that stretch through the front of the thigh. You've got the option to hold here in the low lunge position. We can take a twist, taking your balance into your right hand or fingertips, inhaling to lift the left fingers towards the ceiling, following them with your gaze. And just reach as high as is comfortable for you here. And exhale to release. 
walking the fingertips backwards, we straighten the front leg and pull the toes in towards the torso in half splits. And exhale, low lunge. Twisting to the opposite side, balance comes to the left fingertips, inhale to reach the right fingertips upwards. Exhale to release. From here, we're going to step the left foot back to join the right. You've got the option to stay in the three quarter plank here, or if you'd like to work hard, you can curl the toes under and come to a full plank in a long straight line from the crown to the heels. You're going to really find that spiking of the heels towards the back edge of the mat as you're looking up here. Shifting the weight forwards onto the toes, we exhale, elbows tight into the ribs as you slowly lower. And if you want to work hard, you can add a little hover an inch or two above the mat in Chaturanga before releasing all the way down. We inhale to lift through the heart space. Keep that generous bend in the elbows if you need it here. Or there's an option to extend into the full position of cobra. We exhale to release. Next inhale, we'll return to our full or three quarter plank. Exhale, step right foot to right hand. Again, one long stride or moving it in by hand and drop the back knee. Just take a moment to settle down into this low lunge position. Really drawing your hips towards your right heel, framing the foot with the hands. Again, option to hold here if you need it, or take a twist. Balance to the left fingertips, inhale to reach the right fingertips upwards. Exhale to release. Walking the fingertips backwards. Inhale to half split. Really draw those toes in towards the torso. Exhale, low lunge. Inhaling to lift the left fingertips this time. Exhaling to release. We inhale to step back to our plank, full or three quarter as suits you. And again, we'll take our flow, shifting the weight forwards. We slowly lower. And again, you can come all the way down. You can add that little hover. Final option if you want more. Roll forwards onto the backs of your feet to lift into upward facing dog instead of lifting up into the cobra. So here you want the backs of your feet to be in contact with the mat, your hands and nothing else. From here you exhale to release, back down to your chaturanga and push all the way back up to your plank on an inhale. Exhaling to send the hips up, back and down. As we find our downward facing dog, and just pedal the feet out here. Release the tension in the calves. Find a little comfort in your dog. Eventually, find some stillness. The hands about shoulder width, fingers spread wide. Feet about hip distance apart and the weight balanced equally between the hands and the feet. You want to find a long straight line from the wrists to the hips. If you struggle to maintain that here, bend through the knees until you can get it. We inhale to walk the hands in to meet the feet as we return to our forward fold. So exhale to find a forward fold, either bending through the knees again, we can keep the legs straight for a deeper stretch into the hamstrings. We inhale to find the halfway lift, you can slide the hands up to the thighs again or you can come to the shins this time. Find that long straight line through the back body. Exhale, forward fold. Next inhale, send the hands wide as we come all out standing. Hands meet overhead in prayer. On an exhale, slide down the middle lines of the heart as you walk back to the front of the mat. For a second round. Again, we inhale to extend, reaching up even higher this time. Exhale, forward fold. We inhale to find the halfway lift. Again, hands can come to thighs, to shins. We can keep the fingertips on the mat if you can maintain a straight back in that position. The gaze stays down to the ground, whichever version you're taking. We exhale to forward fold. We inhale, 
Bend the knees generously enough to get the hands flat to the ground and step back to a full or three quarter plank position. Then we take our flow. Exhaling to release to Chaturanga on the floor, elbows tight to the sides. Inhale to baby to full cobra or to upward facing dog. Exhale to floor or to Chaturanga. Inhale to plank. Exhale to step, left foot to left hand. And again, you've got the option to drop the back knee here, but you can keep that back knee lifted if you'd like to work a little harder. Again, still really focusing on drawing the hips towards that front heel. And to try and keep the back leg straight if you've got it lifted, really spiking that heel towards the back edge of the mat. If you're twisting, we inhale to lift the left fingertips and exhale to release. Dropping the back knee, we inhale to half splits. If you want a bit more here, you can always fold the torso down towards that thigh. Exhale, low lunge. Inhale to lift the right fingertips. Exhale to release. Inhale to plank and take your flow. Exhale to lower. Inhale to your lift. Exhale to lower. And inhale to plank. Next exhale, right foot to right hand. And again, just really settle down into your low lunge position. Back knee lowered or lifted. If it's straight, the back leg is spiking the heel towards the mat. Everyone's hips drawing towards that front heel. If you're twisting, we inhale to lift the right fingertips. Exhaling to release. Dropping the back knee, inhaling to half splits. Option again to fold forwards towards that bottom leg. Exhale, low lunge. Inhale to twist. Exhale to release. And inhale to step back to your plank and take your flow. Move in time with your own breath here. Find that lowering, that lifting. Always went a bit funny there, didn't it? <laughs> that lowering. And I'll meet you back in plank. From here, setting the hips up, back and down, to your downward facing dog. And just take a few deep breaths here. Pedal the feet out again if you want to. Okay, from here, we're going to stay in our downward facing dog. And we're going to uh, start to open up through the heart space in our dog. We're going to start reaching towards opposite heels with the hands. So you might find this easier if the feet are a little bit wider than usual, slightly wider than the hips. Or you can keep them hip distance apart. You're maintaining that length through the spine. Really pulling the hips up towards the ceiling, encouraging the heels towards the back edge of the mat. Then you're going to reach your right fingertips through towards your left ankle. And replace that hand back down in a line at the front. And repeat on the other side. Exhaling to reach through towards ankle. Inhaling back to your dog. You just move in time with your own breath here. But you can start to open out through the heart space as you're reaching through. Take a peek under your arm. You feel that stretch across the back of the body, that opening through the front of the body. Okay, one more time on each side. I want you to really focus on keeping the weight balanced equally between both feet and that hand as you're doing it. Okay, from here, right down the facing dog, we're going to step in to a warrior one. 
So you're going to lift, walk the heels together from the feet flush together in your downward dog. You're going to inhale to lift the left foot up towards the ceiling. You're going to flex the foot and point the toes down towards the mat, squaring through the hips. Then you're going to bend the knee, drawing the heel towards the hip. Shift the weight forwards as you're moving towards the plank. Drawing the knee towards the nose and step left foot down by the left hand. And again, if it just steps in here, use your hand to move it up to the front. You're going to pivot on the back heel, dropping the foot down, pointing out by about 45 degrees. You're going to inhale to lift up to your warrior one. To work easier, have a light bend in this front knee. To work harder, sink deeper. Hips and torso stay facing over the front knee. Inhale to lift the fingertips and find our warrior one. So you're going to really squeeze the inner thighs together, find that stability, that grounding sensation through the legs. Your feet want to be about hip distance apart, the further apart they are, the more stable you'll feel here. If you've got struggling with your arms up, you can just bring them to heart or bring them back to the hips. If you're up, you're going to be reaching the fingertips upwards and at the same time trying to squeeze your shoulder blades down and together. I want you to really focus on tugging those ribs forward so that your torso is facing over that front knee. Each inhale, look for length. Each exhale, try to sink a little deeper. Try to push out of the back knife edge of your right foot. From here, we find our humble warrior. Release the fingertips. Interlace the hands behind the back. You can either square off through the wrists here, so you've got that flat line through the hands, or you can draw the palms together. Find what feels good for you today. We squeeze the shoulder blades down together, try to draw all those knuckles down the back edge of your leg and start to fold forwards. And again, you can just come a light option here, finding that straight line from the crown of the head to the back heel. And then further forwards, you can rest the torso onto that thigh or hover just above it if you'd like to work harder into the core. And then you've got the option to keep the hands here. We'll start lifting them up towards the ceiling, allowing the crown of the head to hang down towards the front foot. Stay really active through the legs here as you're ready to push up and away from the mat through the feet any second. Then draw up and back with the knuckles to so inhale, sort of lift all the way back up. Release fingertips, inhale, reach upwards, warrior one. From here we're going to find reverse warrior. Release the right fingertips to the back of the right thigh. And inhale to reach the left fingertips up and over. So if you struggle with back bends, you can just reach up here and keep that straight spine. Or you can start to reach up and over as you slide the right thing, the left fingertips, the right fingertips <laughs> down your back leg. You take your gaze to the underneath of your elbow and really find that lift through the heart here. Feel like you're pulling upwards through the heart space. Inhale, sweep those fingertips back up and through, warrior one. Sink a little deeper this last breath. Release the fingertips, lift the back heel, pivot so the toes are facing forwards. Plant the hands into the shoulders, step your left foot back, join the right and you come to our plank. We're going to find that flow again here. Exhaling, we lower. Inhale to cobra or to upward facing dog. Exhale, chaturanga or the floor. Inhale to plank. Exhale, downward facing dog. We'll just pause here for a few breaths. Take a little pedal through the legs if you need it. Find stillness if that's what you need. We 
going to repeat that on the opposite side. Again, we're going to walk the feet flush together. Inhale, this time to lift the right foot. Flex the foot, toes point down to the mat, squaring through the hips. Then bend the knee, throwing heel towards hip. Shift the weight forward. So you're thinking about shifting towards a plank kind of position here as you draw the knee towards the nose. Then step the right foot down at the front and land the right hand. Again, adjust it by hand if you need to. Pivoting on the back heel, toes pointing out by 45 degrees. We inhale to lift up. More and more, opposite side. And again, just take a moment to really settle into a warrior here. Option to have the hands on the hips if you need it, or hands at prayer. If you're staying in prayer, keep really active elbows, pressing the palms in together, elbows sticking out wide from the wrists. If you're working easier with a light bend in that leg, or harder with a deeper bend, and really focus on drawing the ribs to face over that front leg. If you've got the fingertips extended at the same time, you're finding that lift through the fingertips, you're finding that squeezing down and together at the shoulder blades. And that like yin and yang, that opposition pulling effect. Really push out the knife edge of the back foot. Really, you know, find some comfort in your warrior. You want to feel like you're working. You want to also feel a sense of ease, the possibility to find a stillness. Your face is here. Exhale to release fingertips. Interlace behind the back again, squaring through the wrists or palms flush together. Really draw those knuckles down the back edge of the left leg. And again, we'll start to fold forwards. Again, you can stop here, hang that straight line from the back heel to the crown of the head. You can release really further forwards. Option to rest the torso on the front thigh if you need it, or to work harder hovering just above. And again, you can stay here. We'll start to rise the knuckles towards the ceiling and allow the crown of the head to fold down the inside edge of the calf towards the front foot. Humble warrior. Again, really bring your focus to the heart space here. Try to find as much space for your heart as you can. You'll feel like it's a bright headlight shining its light right through. The higher you're lifting your knuckles, the deeper you're squeezing your shoulder blades in together, the more space you'll make for your heart. And we inhale to push up and back with the knuckles as we rise up. If you need it any time here, you can straighten the legs to take a break as well. Releasing the fingertips and inhaling, warrior one. And focus on your rib position, really tugging your ribs to face over that front knee. Squeeze shoulders down together, squeeze the inner thighs together, find that stability, that grounding. We'll find our humble warrior. Left fingertips, reverse warrior. Left fingertips release to left thigh. Right fingertips reach up and over. And again, you've got the option to hold at the top here, just reaching upwards with the straight spine, or to reach further up and back. Again, really lift your heart space towards the ceiling here. Take one last breath. Exhale to release the hands, sweeping under, up and through, warrior one. Take one last breath in your warrior. I know my leg's shaking. Then release fingertips to frame the front foot. Lift the back heel, pivot the foot so the toes are all facing forwards. Plant the hands under the shoulders and step your right foot back to join your left and take your flow. Exhale to release. Inhale to find your heart opener, find your lift. Exhale to release chaturanga or floor. Inhale to plank. Then we exhale, down facing dog. Okay, 
Okay, from here, into bend the knees. Slowly, slowly release to the ground. Bring the toes together, take your knees as wide as the mat, and the hips back and down to the heels. What about your child's pose? You've got the option to keep the hands extended out long in front of the shoulders, resting your forehead on the mat. If you'd like a more restive pose, swim the hands around so that beside the calves, with the palms facing towards the ceiling. Breathe here. Just take this rest, you deserve it. Okay, if you've extended the hands back next to the legs, I'd like you to walk them back through in front of the shoulders, come back to your extended child's pose. Then lifting up the heart space, you're going to inhale, shift the weight forwards. Bring the shoulders back over the wrists and coming around to a three-quarter plank position. Okay, so we've got a bit of work here into some planks and side planks with an option to wild thing as well. So we can start with plank. You can have hands under the shoulders and if you need to you can stay in this three-quarter plank or you can lift into a full plank. And from here we're going to bring the weight into the right hand the left hand, sorry, and you're going to start to pivot over onto the edges of your feet. So you'll have the feet stacked one in front of the other, you'll be resting on the edges of the feet. You can bring your hand to your hip and find your side plank here. If you're working on your knees, you're going to bring the bottom calf out to rest on the floor and come here instead. So you're extended through the top leg and bent through the bottom leg in a three-quarter side plank. So you can keep the hand on the hip here or you can extend it up towards the ceiling. I want you to find a really long, sharp line through the side body here. If the hips are starting to fall down, gently lift them upwards as you pull the fingertips up towards the ceiling. Then you've got the option to stay here you can lift your top leg and if you'd like to join me for a wild thing you're going to bend the top knee and reach those toes around behind you and lift up through the heart space open up through your right fingertips as you encourage your heart space to shine up towards the ceiling Exhale, back to side plank, and inhale to roll back through to plank position, lower the knees, toes together, knees wide, child pose. Take three juicy breaths here before we repeat on the other side. same thing on the opposite side. So you're going to inhale, lifting with your heart space, shift the weight through and forwards and come back to our plank three quarter or full and transition to our side plank. So again from the knees, from the bottom leg out behind you as you roll around straightening through the top leg or shifting around the weight on both feet. Again, you lift the hips up and away, find that long straight line through the side body, an option to extend fingertips. I've got a flat in my mouth as well, sorry. And again, option to lift through the top leg. I want to stay really active through the shoulder here. So the resting shoulder, you're pushing up and away from the mat. If you're taking a wild thing, bend the top leg, 
Draw the toes out and around. And lift your heart space towards the ceiling. toes and knees flush together, hips back and down. I'd like you to walk the hands in together, bring the hands to prayer and draw the heels of the hands to the back of the head as you rest your forehead on the mat. Make yourself a little sharp thing. And to walk the elbows a little further away from the shoulders and try to tug back through the fingertips. Okay, extending hands out long in line with the shoulders again. Shift your weight through. We come back to our plank. Full or three quarter. And again, we're going to take our flow. That's it. Chaturanga. Inhale to Cobra or upward facing dog. Exhale to Chaturanga or to floor. Inhale to plank. And we exhale down facing dog. And from here, we need to bring the feet flush together. We're going to inhale to lift the left toes. Flex the foot, point the toes down towards the mat. Bend the knee. Exhale, shift the weight forwards, drawing nose and knee together. And step left foot through to left hand. You're going to pivot all the way around on the back foot this time, so that your toes are pointing out over the wide edge of your mat. Then you're going to inhale to lift up lead with your right fingertips and reach up and over and we come to warrior two. If you struggle with your arms up and line with the shoulders here you can release them to rest on the hips and you're going to really try and square your hips and your torso to face over the wide edge of the mat. You can take your gaze through the middle finger of your left hand or you can keep it straight ahead whichever suits you here today. You're going to try and squeeze your left knee towards the wall behind you. Find that opening through the hips. Squeeze the inner thighs together at the same time. Restabilize your pose. Find that lift through the spine, pull the crown of the head to the ceiling. On the exhale, if you can sink a little deeper. If you need to work easier, though, you can always keep a lighter bend in that front knee. Okay, coming to another little flow. Going to bend the left elbow, release. Left elbow to left thigh and sweep right fingertips down and around to reach up. You're trying to try and find a long straight line from your right fingertips to your right heel. Quiet please. So each inhale trying to find the length between the knife edge of the back foot and the fingertips. Each exhale, try to lift your heart space up. Try to lift it up towards the elbow. You can bring your gaze to the underside of the elbow. Keep it straight ahead or down towards the bottom foot. It's a bit more stabilizing if you keep the gaze downwards if you struggle with your balance. Then we inhale to reach up with the right fingertips. And we return to our warrior two. Next, you're going to come to a triangle, so you're going to straighten through that front leg, 
as you tilt down, releasing left hand to left thigh. So you can stay here, you're going to keep the back really straight so it's pressing against the wall, just sliding down, coming to either the shin, to the foot, or possibly to the ground. Option as well to hover, pressing the back edge of the left hand into the calf. You'll be strengthening your core a little further here. And really concentrate on feeling so you've got your back pressed flush against the wall. If you're struggling with the top hand, release it to the hip. You're going to try each inhale, drawing your top hip towards the wall behind you. Each exhale, push the bottom hip out away from the wall. Then we inhale to reach up and back with the right fingertips, bending back through that front knee. Warrior two. Take one more breath here. Then sweep the right fingertips through, sitting into frame that front foot. Lift the back heel, pivot so the toes face towards the front. We'll take our flow. Step the feet back together. Exhale, chaturanga or floor. Inhale to your heart opener, cobra or upward dog. Exhale, chaturanga or floor. Inhale, it's plank. Exhale, downward facing dog. Again, opposite side, feet can flush together. This time we inhale to lift the left foot, the right foot. Flex the foot, toes face downwards. Bend the knee, drink heel towards hip. Shift your weight forwards towards the plank as you draw knee to nose. Step right foot down by right hand. Pivot on the back foot so the toes are facing out over the wide edge of your mat. And again, leading with the left fingertips. Into inhale to reach up and over. As you come back to our warrior two on the opposite side. Again, you can take your gaze through the middle finger of the right hand or straight ahead as suits you. Squeeze the inner thighs together. Push out the knife edge of the back foot. Keep the torso facing over the wide edge of the mat. And try and really hug the ribs in here to find that lift, that lengthening through the spine. Looking back to our side angle. Bending right elbow, release right elbow to right thigh. Left fingertips sweep underneath to reach up. And again, you're trying to find that long straight line from fingertips to back heel. Find that lift through the heart space. Keep tugging that front knee out towards the wall behind you. Keep lifting through the heart space. One more breath. I'm going to inhale to reach up and over with the left fingertips. Warrior two. And again, from here we transition back to our triangle, our trikonasana, straightening through the front leg, releasing right hand to right thigh. Again, option to stay here if you need to, otherwise, really trying to keep your back straight so it's pressed against the wall as you slide downwards, either to the shin, to the foot. You can release the hand to the floor if you're quite flexible here. Or again, if you're focusing on core strength, pressing the outer edge of the palm, the hand, <laughs> the outer edge of the palm, yes, your hand. Press the back of the hand against the calf. And then you're trying to find length from fingertip to fingertip here. Trying to really focus on keeping the back straight so it's pressing against the wall. 
Lifting back with the top shoulder and the top hip, pushing forwards with the bottom hip. Gaze either through the top hand, the bottom hand, or anywhere in between. Again, the same principle applies, it's more stabilizing to stare downwards. Take one more breath here. Then reaching up and back with the left fingertips, bending the front knee. Virabhadrasana two. We've just got a couple more breaths here, so really refine your pose. Make sure you've got your shoulders stacked right over your hips, torso facing over the wide edge of the mat, squeezing in together with the thighs. Find that lift through the ribs, that lengthening through the spine, squeezing the shoulder blades down and together. Okay. Left fingertips sweep underneath. Frame the foot, the hands. Pivot on the back heel, on the back toes. So the toes are facing forwards and step your right foot back to join your left. Take your flow. Exhale, Chaturanga or floor. Inhale, Cobra or up dog. Exhale, floor or Chaturanga. And inhale, it's plank. Exhale, we find our downward facing dog. Take a breath in. <laughs> From here we're going to soften through the knees, release knees to mat, knees and toes flush together, hips back and down, find your child's pose. To your place, Freddie. In your place. Trying to teach them their places. Unsuccessfully, as you can probably say. Okay, then, from our child's pose, we're going to shift the weight forwards, leading with the heart space, and come to a tabletop position. We're going to walk your left knee to your left hand and bring the toes underneath the body by about 45 degrees then winch back with the right foot we'll find our pigeon okay let's try and draw your left hip down towards the mat as low as you can and if you stay here extend it up you can release down to the elbows or with the arms along if you want some more rested pose if you want a deep stretch you can always walk this front foot forwards Possibly even bringing it parallel to the front edge of your mat, you'll get a deeper stretch into the hip. Don't do this at the expense of rolling over though, because the stretch just disappears. So as long as you can keep your hips square to the floor, you'll be fine. Okay, further option if you want it here. Bad knees might not always like this, it's a little bit of pressure onto the knee. You'll do this from the lifted position, you'll bend the back knee and reach around with the left hand to take hold of the back edge of your left foot. If you're quite comfortable, you can stay here. If you want more, you can bend that knee in closer and walk it into the crook of your elbow. And again, you've got the option to stay here, just tugging that heel in gently towards the hip. Feel that stretch through the front of the thigh. If you want more, you can make it a full mermaid and reach up and over with your left fingertips to take hold of your right fingertips. Again, try to find some space here through the heart. Find that lifting upwards through the heart space. Then try to relax through the lower body. Allow the hips to sink down towards the mat. Focus all the strengthening into that lifting through the heart space. All softening into the lower body. Exhale to release left hand to floor, release 
your right foot to the mat, hands into the shoulders, step, left foot back, turn the hips back and down, and repeat on the other side. Shifting through to our box position, right knee to right hand, right toes coming under the body by 45 degrees, and shuffling back. To your face, ready? Probably help have a better aim, wouldn't it? Shuffling back with the left foot, trying to bring your right hip down towards the mat. And again, you can stay in the extended pose here. You can take a restive one, resting on the elbows or arms out long. Or again, you've got the option, bring that stretch into the front of your thigh or possibly come to the mermaid. Bending the back knee, reaching around with your left hand to take hold of the back edge of your left foot. And again, you can stay here. You can bring it in closer, you can bring the foot into the crook of the elbow. And again, you can hold here. Or you can reach up and over with your right fingertips and take hold, clasping finger to finger and find your mermaid. Again, I want you to find that lift through the heart space. Each inhale, trying to pull the heart up towards that crease between wall and ceiling. Each exhale, find a softening through the lower body. to release, right hand to the floor, release your grip on the back foot, hands into the shoulders, step your right knee back under the hip and again bring the knees wide this time, wide as you dare, so the hips back and down to the toes. going to walk your fingertips out to the right hand side. So both hands are coming out towards the right, just as far as is comfortable for you. Walk them both as far away from the body as you can and as far around and then gently tug back to the left shoulder. And change sides. Inhale to walk the hands back to centre and then out to the left hand side. Again getting them as far away, reaching out as far as you can. This feels comfortable but there's a slight level of discomfort but still, you know, not painful. And then gently tug back with your right shoulder. Stay in your places. In your place with to walk the hands in, you're going to bring the knees together and then sit up nice and tall here. So you've got the option if you're quite comfortable like me sitting on the backs of your feet you can stay here, if not you can curl the toes under and sit on your heels here. This is quite nice if you do you need to stretch through the feet, through the toes, I'm a bit arthritic on my toes though so I find this exquisitely painful but also good for me so I'm staying here for now but it looks slightly dodgy on one foot, so I'm just going to show you one side of me. <laughs> so 
So you're going to sit nice and tall, roll the shoulder blades up, back and down, pull the crown of the head to the ceiling, and reach the fingertips behind you. And again, option one here, you can stay with that same, that interlacing of the fingers, but I'd like you to put the opposite thumb on top this time, the one that feels a little bit weird. Shift, shuffle the fingers up one. And again, you can stay squared through the wrists or press the palms together as you draw the knuckles down towards your toes. If you want more, you can find reverse prayer. You'll release the interlacing of the fingers and you'll turn the fingertips in to face towards the lower back and draw them up to face towards the ceiling and try to draw the heels of the hands together. And you can stay as low down as you need to here, the higher up the cup you come, the closer you'll be able to get the heels of the hands, but the more strain you'll feel into the shoulders. So find what works for you, find what feels comfortable. Uh, you want a level of discomfort, but without it moving into pain. And you're going to try and really squeeze the shoulder blades down together, find that lift through the heart space. This will really help you to try and draw the palms together. Exhale to release and take a little wrist circle here to release any tension that's built up. Done quite a lot of wrist work today, I know it can build up. Leave him. Release through the feet and then from here we're going to bring the legs out wide. So I'll shift around so you can see me. Um, and you need to bring the legs out wide and pull the toes up towards the ceiling. But it's wide enough that you feel the light pull on the inner thighs here. We're going to inhale to reach the fingertips upwards, really nice and tall, lengthen from the tailbone all the way up to the crown of the head. Then we're going to reach up and reach over towards the left toes. Inhale to extend. Exhale to reach. Inhale to lift. And this time we'll stay down. So you get the option to rest your hands on the thigh. The shin will be quite flexible to take hold of the foot here. I want you to keep really focused on keeping both toes of both feet, all toes of both feet, pulling up towards the ceiling. You're going to try and sink the torso towards the left thigh and draw the crown of the head towards the left toes. And you've got the option to stay here, or if you'd like to take a revolved head to knee pose, you can draw the left elbow to the ground, to the inside edge of your left leg, and swing your right fingertips up past the right hip, then up and over as you reach towards your left toes. And again, you're trying to Pull your heart space up towards the ceiling whilst trying to keep your left elbow in contact with the ground. You can play around here with how far away or how close the elbow is in. I find just above my knee to be the perfect spot for me. Everyone's body is made differently. to reach upwards with the right fingertips, upwards with the left fingertips and repeat to the other side, reaching over towards the right toes, on the exhale, inhale it to lift up, leave him, win, go to your place, Fred, Fred, go to your place. Again, you can move in time with your own breath here. Each inhale lifting, each exhale reaching towards the right toes, and eventually we hold down. Again, rest on the thigh, the shin, or take hold of the foot. 
Try to encourage the crown of the head towards the right toes, the torso, towards the thigh. And again, you can see here, if you're happy enough here, you're getting stretched, you're quite comfortable, you feel like anything more will be pushing it. Or you can join me in the revolved version, bringing the right elbow to the inside edge of the right leg. Then, Fred, no. Get down. And sweeping your left fingertips around past the left hip to reach them up and over towards your right toes. Again, stay really focused on lifting the toes with both feet up towards the ceiling. Focus on that lift through the heart space whilst you're trying to keep the elbow in contact with the ground. And feel that openness all through the ribs, the spaciousness in the heart area. That lovely stretch to the inner thigh, to the hamstrings, to the side body, the back of the hips. Okay, then we inhale to lift up with the left fingertips, with the right fingertips. And this time, release the fingertips down directly in front of the torso, walk them forwards. Keep focus on squeezing those toes up towards the ceiling as you walk the hands out in front of the body. You should come as far as you comfortably can. I've got a little, little down facing dog just out of camera there for my puppy. Could have been perfect. And this is one of those poses where just time helps to ease it. You find that, that relaxing through the legs, through the hips as you've been here for a few minutes. The tension starts to go. And with that release, that calmness, you find that relaxation of the muscles allowing you to come a little deeper, sinking a little lower, walking the fingertips a little further away. You'd think my calm yoga voice would sort this out, wouldn't you? Okay, Fred, to your place. Win, to your place. Your place, Win. You stay in your places. And again, the breath can really help here, that calming of the breath, making the out breath a beat longer than the in breath, helps calm the parasympathetic systems in the body, and that in turn will help you to relax through the muscles, allowing you to deepen a little further into the stretch. And then we inhale to walk the hands back in, and then we're going to draw the heels together. So you bend through the knees and draw the soles of the feet together. Take hold of the inside edge of the ankles. You can keep a generous space here between your hips and your heels or for a deeper stretch you can walk the heels in close to your hips. And then try to encourage the knees out towards the sides. You can rock from side to side or you can just squeeze the knees downwards. You can also interlace the fingers, wrap them around your toes, squeeze the shoulder blades down together, lift through the crown of the head, lift through the heart space. And again, we've got a few minutes here, feeling quite relaxed. Just focusing on letting gravity draw all the knees down towards the mat or encouraging the knees down towards the mat with your muscle strength. You can also take a moment to give yourself a little massage to the insides of the feet if you want to. Take a moment just to thank your body for all it's doing for you. It feels really weird in the state you like that, doesn't it? Okay, we've got one more breath. On the inhale, really focus on that lengthening through the spine. On the exhale, really focus on drawing the knees down as wide as you can. And release the grip on the ankles or the toes. Bring the hands to the outer edges of the legs. Draw the knees in together. And then from here, roll down onto your back. Hug the knees into the chest. Oh, thank you, Fred. Can you sit in your place? Okay, 
release the feet down, the soles of the feet come flat to the ground, close up to the hips. Arms can loose by the sides, and you can start to curl up, lifting through the tailbone first. Then rolling up one vertebrae at a time until you come to a bridge position in a long straight line from the knees to the shoulders. And you've got the option just to stay here or you can interlace the fingers again behind the back. Again, squared through the wrists, all the hands flush together. And then you use that to rock from side to side on the shoulders. You find that lift, you can push the hips up a little higher. You're going to keep the heels, the knees and the hips all in line. Win. Don't tease him. I'll play with you in a minute. You're going to keep the gaze straight up to the ceiling here. You find that openness through the heart. So there's a light shining directly out of the heart space shining up towards the ceiling or the sky above. <laughs> Come on now. Take one last breath. Lift the hips, squeeze the buttocks to push the hips up a little bit higher. And exhale to release the hands and slowly, really slowly roll down. Furling the spine one vertebrae at a time until the flat of your back comes to the flat of the mat. Hug the knees into the chest. Give yourself one last big tight squeeze in here. And then from here we come to our Shavasana. Extend the legs out long towards the bottom corners of the mat. Letting the feet fall naturally out to the sides. Fred, to your place. Win, to your place. Feet fall naturally out to the sides. Arms come out long by the sides, the palms to the ceiling. And again, roll the shoulders up, back and down. Just squeeze your shoulder blades down and together. And find that final, that opening through the heart space. Pelvis tilts ever so slightly upwards and the chin ever so slightly downwards to give you length from the crown of the head to the tailbone. If you do get any discomfort in the lower back, you might be more comfortable with the knees bent, feet as wide as the mat and allow the knees to rest upon each other here, just to give you a little extra space through the lower back. Make any last minute adjustments that you need to, to become entirely comfortable. Take a deep inhale. And on the exhale, allow the eyes to softly close. You can stay here for as long as you have the time to spare. I recommend at least five calm, relaxing minutes. Just allowing the muscles to release, the body to sink down to the mat below. Allow the practice to sink in. Take the time to thank your body for the work it has done for you today. I'll leave you here to enjoy your Shavasana and see you next time. From my heart to yours, thank you very much for joining me. I'll see you next time. Bye.